Well, we have uh, a lot of redirection that can go on in life uh, from these lessons uh, for today. In the Gospel of Mark, it appears that a couple of disciples, uh, they may be asking for something which is good, but uh, very often it is not a good thing. Uh, they wanted to be with Jesus, you know, in, in the place, which is a superior place. Uh, and uh, uh, what for? <laughs> it becomes one of the obvious questions. So easily to be in a, in a glorious place, a good place, a powerful place, a place which has great influence, uh, it becomes a, a, a very self-centered kind of thing. And that's uh, evidently what the other disciples were dis, uh, concerned about when they, well, they didn't like that kind of thing, trying to sneak ahead of us, you know, kind of thing. Uh, and, and the reality is, is that the, the whole focus is a destructive focus. And too easily, that is the focus of our personal lives. We want to get ahead, don't we? Yeah. Make sure we got all the stuff we need and probably a few things more because we're a little superior then, aren't we? Yeah. It's very easy. We get into that mindset. Uh, wealth is a part of it, uh, and we can see it grossly in some people uh, in our society, but subtly it is very easily right there in our lives. We worked hard. Huh? We, got it, you know, we put our mind to use. We, we got a good mind, yeah. Uh, well, maybe some of those people, they don't. So. Uh, they're inferior. That is destructive. For the whole of God's creation, it is always destructive to put those kind of things or those kind of people in a less important place than where we think we are. And we begin to, or no, we will continue to focus on getting more and more stuff, whatever is important uh, to us, for ourselves at the deprivation of other people. It's the problem of wealth. The more you have, the less somebody else can have. We justify that by saying, well, we're just better people, aren't we? Are we really? What's the definition of better people? There is where Jesus gives a new direction. The one in the superior position is to be the one who serves. So, you got a job. You're the supervisor. What are you supposed to do? Control and tell everybody what to do? Or are you there to help the other person do the best that they can? I've seen that uh, in the workplace. Because you all say it, it's my son who was a supervisor. And he saw his role as helping the people do their job. They knew the job better than he did. And how can he help them to make sure that it is done well? Lots of good things went on with that. I've seen other places where the supervisor has the other people, they are to serve him, to make him look good. And uh, invariably, invariably, that does not help the organization or the people or society. So Jesus responds to this thing that the disciples want and says, are, are, are you able to be immersed in the stuff that I am immersed? Baptized, you know, uh, 
drink the cup that I uh, drink. Uh, and then describes what that is like. It is the use, the sacrifice of what we have been given to make the rest of the world better. That provides life. Isn't that what God's creative spirit is all about? To, to take and make better rather than to use up. We, we are not here to uh, just give God more and more and more and more and more. No. But to, to learn from what we have seen from God in Jesus, to live in a way which is beneficial. That's what life is all about. Anything less than that destroys it, doesn't it? If we were to use up and consume and take and get whatever we can from other people, that destroys the other people, doesn't it? It tears them down worse. So when we ask to be with the glory of God, are we ready to get involved? Becomes one of the questions. When we committed ourselves to the Christian way of life, were we aware of what that is all about? I would say maybe. Yeah. It's like uh, one illustration. It's like the child who says, I want a dog. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'll take care of it. Do you know what that's all about? Yeah. So we have here in this lesson then uh, a, a direction to what life is all about, what God intended for life to be, what God's creation was intended to be. Not to be used up and consumed, but to be put together in the best possible way to make it always even better. I was uh, run into, at my age, uh, uh, there comes a point where people seem to want to, uh, well, I'm not gonna live that long, so I don't know whether I wanna do that. It's not gonna pay off for me. But what about the next generation? It, it, this, this whole contact with Jesus is, is, is a way of looking at what truly is better, what truly is beneficial. So we can struggle with that individually. But we have come together as a group, as a congregation, And we have the same struggle. What is it that we want as a congregation? Do we want to be beneficial? Or we just want to make ourselves secure? It's really a problem as we get older, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, there was, a, there was a, certainly a time in the life of this uh, congregation when it was a powerful organization uh, taking the risk financially of building uh, a religious community, hopefully a community of service to the community. Uh, we struggled, we took risks very easy. Now that we are uh, in a fairly secure thing, we instead of focusing on what the mission of this then is, we get too focused on just taking care of ourselves. Budget-wise, activity-wise. What is it that we're doing to benefit the community, those who are 
hurting, those who have great needs, those who could use help to reform, renew, reinvigorate uh, their lives. Are we willing to take the risk? Becomes the secondary question that goes along with that. Some people may misuse this, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Some people may be involved in such awful kind of behavior that you want to just kind of get them out of your sight rather than help them. Is the death penalty something like that? Huh? Okay, well, they're not worth trying to reform, renew. They did such awful things. They don't deserve it. D did we ever really deserve the love of God? But it's there. It's always there. Always has been there. We don't recognize it. We don't sense many times where the Spirit of God is operating in our lives. But we've come together and made this commitment to be with Jesus, to tune into the Spirit. And that's the powerful thing that can change us and get us going. So, if you want to figure out where that spirit might be, well, it's all around. A lot of times we don't recognize where. We, we think there are some structures that can open up that spirit of God. So we study the scriptures. We pray. We participate in the sacraments. We have contact, involvement with other spirit-filled people. And then we are empowered to be what God intended us to be. That's, that's the possibilities that come up. And we see some, uh, some real, uh, how would you say it, um, tragic or difficult stuff that can be a part of that process. We have it described there in, in, in our first lesson uh, uh, from, um, uh, um, where is it? Isaiah, Isaiah 53, you know, that the servant uh, song there. Uh, wow, powerful stuff that this Jesus, this one of God, goes through to benefit us, to get us reoriented renewed and brought alive. And as the Spirit touches each one of our lives, it is that possibility also that leads what we do to energize and bring alive and bring about powerfully good stuff in this world in which we live. Yeah. It won't be always fun. But what a wonderful thing. What an accomplishment. The goodness, the creative goodness of life that God intended. May the Spirit of God touch our, all of our lives that we became, become the very presence of God in the world. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.